has taught me to say it is well it is well with my you would, 405, a friend I have called Jesus. Would you stand with me as we sing? It's just like his great love. On that first together, a friend I have called have you here tonight on the last Sunday of 2015. It's great to have you. Let's open in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for giving us so much. There's so much that you've done here in 2015. God, I pray that uh, we would take that and build upon it and just continue to 
uh, march forward as we go into the next year. God, I pray that uh, this evening, right here, right now, that uh, you would be with us. You would just control the service. God, I pray that everything we do, everything we say, everything we sing, Lord, would be honoring and glorifying to you. Lord, we thank you and we praise you for all you've done and what you're doing in this place tonight. In Jesus' precious name, amen. You may be seated. Let's turn over to 413 in your hymnal. 413. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, but love lifted me. 413, together on that first. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained with sin. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. From the waters lifted me, no saint am I. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me. could say that's her testimony tonight that when nothing else could help love yeah. lifted me if you if, if you sing that and you see that there's words and really think about it man you can't help but smile can't help but just yeah. get excited because yeah. when nothing else could help love lifted me let's sing that uh, second verse together all my heart to him i give ever to him i cling in his blessed presence live ever his a love so mighty and so true Merits my soul's best song Faithful, loving service to do him Belong Love lifted me Love lifted me When nothing else could help Love lifted me Love lifted me Yes, love lifted me singing tonight. If you have a uh, bulletin, if you'll take it out, we have a few things that's uh, going on here in the next couple weeks. Later on this week, we do have our uh, Wednesday night uh, service. Uh, make sure and be here right in your place uh, for our Bible study. And I believe uh, the last uh, message on faithfulness this uh, coming Wednesday, uh, drawing the December to a close, and then um, Thursday. You want to be here Thursday. Thursday is just a great, uh, it's just a fun, exciting, <coughs> excuse me, it's a great time to really enjoy each other, get to know one another. Um, if there's uh, folks in the church you didn't know, maybe you didn't know their names and they never hung out with them, Thursday night's a good time to uh, be here and just get to know one another and um, uh, you'll really, really enjoy yourself. We'll reveal the theme uh, of 2016. I, I, I'm excited to uh, see what God's going to do here at Bible Baptist Church this next year. It's uh, just going to be a really uh, great, great time. And so uh, be in your place here, and uh, we'll just have a great time. If you'll uh, sign up down in the foyer, we appreciate that. And then the um, not uh, this coming Saturday, but the following Saturday, the 9th, 
we'll have our worker appreciation or worker um, sorry the worker banquet and um, I just um, if you are involved in any ministry here at the church or you want to be involved in any ministry here at the church uh, be here um, we'd love to uh, uh, love to have you. Uh, just uh, really uh, want to set a vision for the year and uh, give you an idea as to where you can uh, plug in if uh, you need a, a job to do and see where uh, maybe the Lord's burdened your heart in a particular ministry. So be here on um, at, uh, January the 9th at 5 p.m. We're starting a little bit earlier this year uh, so we can finish a little bit earlier. Uh, Saturday evenings, we sure try not to keep you very late so you can be raring to go on Sunday, all right? And then, of course, we do have the ladies' uh, night out and the men's breakfast uh, in January. Uh, um, <clears throat> we'll have those um, uh, sign-ups down uh, next, uh, probably next Sunday. Um, I believe that's about it. Uh, we will be having uh, RU on uh, Friday, uh, this coming Friday, New Year's Day. Um, we, we did have RU last uh, Friday. It was just a, a great, it, we had a great time. Um, it's Christmas Day, and uh, we had an 18 adults up here, and uh, for our you, and it was just it was just a really really good time, and um, we look forward to seeing what God's going to do with our you here in the next uh, year as well. So um, be praying uh, for the ministry there. We will have the um, our you on Friday, and then uh, going into London on Saturday as well. Um, I'm looking to see if we have any visitors. Oh, oh yes. And then uh, right after the service tonight, so I'll try to remember to announce that after the service, but uh, right after the service we'll have anybody interested in the um, uh, School of the Bible classes that uh, Brother Moreland and Brother Yoder are putting together. Um, uh, the men, uh, you heard about it in the uh, last uh, uh, men's breakfast. Um, ladies, I'm not sure if uh, you were told about it or not, but it's a, it's a um, I believe so. But there's a um, School of the Bible that uh, we're going to uh, begin um, in January, and uh, assuming folks are interested in it. And uh, if you are, if you'll meet Brother Moreland just for a few minutes down in the conference room after the service, uh, that'd be great. And um, it, it's just a, a good, solid, uh, solid Bible teaching. And um, uh, you have the opportunity to get a Bible certificate at the end of a uh, couple years, and it's just a, a great opportunity there. So if you um, are interested in that, want to meet with Brother, Brother Moreland right after the uh, evening service uh, in the conference room for just a couple minutes, and uh, he'll get things squared away and see where we are with that project, all right? And um, don't see any visitors. Uh, Brother Bowman, great to see you. Uh, always good to have you. And at this time, let's hear from the choir.
Well, would you turn with me to four and with your and your hymnal to 463, 463. When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more. On that first together. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more. And the morning breaks eternal bright and fair. When the saved of earth shall gather. singing 492 turn to 492 if you would when you find that if you'd stand <clears throat> jesus christ has made to me all i need all i need jesus christ has made to me all i Jesus is my all in all. Jesus is another make somebody feel welcome we'll come back and sing that last stanza together
all I need. Let's sing that last together as you find your seats. Glory, glory to the Lamb. You may be seated. <clears throat> we have the ushers come forward for our evening offering. All right. Brother Andy, would you? Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for another opportunity to be in your house, and Lord, we just pray tonight for those that aren't able to be with us, um, just feeling sick, Father, with the bug that's going around, just pray that you'd strengthen them, strengthen Pastor tonight, I pray that he'd get the rest he needs to get his strength back um, for the week ahead, and just pray that you'd bless each gift and giver alike now as we take this offering, may you be pleased with what comes in, and may you bless what comes in. Father, we'll thank you for it. Just pray that you'd open our hearts now as we get ready for the preaching of your word after this. And we'll thank you and give you all the praise and glory, for you are worthy. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. This time I'm going to have Tanya come, which is special, and then we'll get right into the word.
happy faces line the hallway. Those whose lives have been redeemed, broken homes that he has mended. Those from prison he has freed, little children and the aged, hand in hand, stand all aglow. They who are crippled, broken, ruined, clad in garments white as snow. I can hear the chariots rumble, I can see the marching throng in the flurry of God's trumpets spell the end of sin and wrong. Regal robes are now unfolding, heaven's grand stands all in place. Heaven's choir is now assembled, starts to sing amazing grace. The King is coming, the King is coming. I can hear the trumpet sounding, and now his face I see. Oh, the King is coming, the King is coming. Praise God, he is coming. Amen. Turn your Bibles, if you would, to James chapter 1. James chapter 1, verse 17. This is something that's uh, been on my heart for a little while. And um, if you were at RU Friday night, you heard some of this. So uh, prayerfully, the Lord gives you something new. And, um, but, uh, James chapter 1, verse 17 says, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for giving us your holy scripture. Lord, we thank you that you've given us something that's is a word from you to us. God, I pray that as we look into your word tonight, I pray that you would give us something. Lord, something we can take away from this and uh, that it would make us a little bit more like you. God, I pray that you would empty me of me tonight, Lord. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' precious and holy name we do pray. Amen. Every good and every perfect gift cometh from above. We, we're just coming out of the Christmas season, aren't we? And in the Christmas season, a lot of times, what, we, what do we think of when we think of Christmas? We think of gifts, right? Think of Christmas gifts. How, how many of you have ever uh, gotten a Christmas gift and you... Uh, Got it one Christmas, and then the next Christmas, you don't even remember what you got. You ever, you ever saw that? You look back and think, last Christmas, what is it? What, what did I get? I don't even remember what those are. This year, we had a, um, we had a Christmas gift, and uh, uh, Emma Jean uh, was uh, given a, uh, a, it's a Lego set, a, a really decent little Lego set, a really nice Lego set. And... Um, we, we gave the kids this, the talk, you know, the, if you have, you already have it, then you're still grateful for it, and you say thank you, and you act like you like it, and, you know, it, you don't say, I already got this, you know. Uh, so, we, you know, we gave them the talk before, beforehand, and uh, so uh, one of the very first things that Emma Jean opened, actually it may be the very first thing that Emma Jean opened, was this Lego set. And it was a really cool Lego set. There's a little princess girl Lego set. And I'm sitting there, and I'm, oh, isn't that great? Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that neat? And she's sitting there, and, mm, and she's just being really great. 
And I didn't have a clue as to what was going on. Well, I found out later that <coughs> this Lego set was the exact same Lego set the exact same person gave her the year before. <laughs> and she had remembered. Obviously, Daddy had not. But she had remembered. But so often, and, and, and she did great. She, she didn't, you know, I don't think anybody else knew. We went and exchanged it, and all, it's all good, and she's a happy camper. But I, I want to talk about tonight a little bit about forgotten gifts. What gifts has God given us that we've forgotten about? What gifts here in this world do we have as a Christian that God has given us that we may have forgotten about? And I have a, about eight, I think, tonight. They keep on multiplying here. So I, I think we're up to about eight now of gifts that God has given us that we need to not forget about. There was a, there were three sons, and I, I told this on Friday night, and they liked it, so I figure I'll tell you too. Three sons, they were pretty successful. And um, these three sons decided they, they, they were going to uh, get their mother a gift, all three of them different gifts, and they're fairly uh, well-to-do um, sons and uh, very uh, successful sons. And so the first son, he says, I'm going to build my mom a house great, big, nice house, and she'll love this house. Second son, he says, you know what, I'm going to give my mother a Mercedes. She's going to look snazzy in that Mercedes. Then the third son, he says, you know what, I've got you guys beat. I know what mom's going to want. I know mom, she enjoys the Bible. I know she can't see very well. So I sent her, sent, um, her this parrot, this parrot that can recite the entire Bible. It took 20 monks in a monastery 12 years to train this thing. I had to pledge to contribute $100,000 for 10 years to the monastery to, uh, to get them to do this. But you know what? It, it's worth it. All mom has to do is say a chapter and verse, and that parrot will recite it. So all three of them gave mama the gifts, and soon afterwards, the mom uh, wrote back letters of thanks. And she wrote to the first, song, uh, first son, she said, Michael, the house you built, it's too big. I only live in one room of this house, but I have to clean the whole thing. The second son, she wrote, son, I'm nearly blind, so I can't drive. I stay home all the time, so I never use the Mercedes. And the third son, dearest Mel Melvin, she wrote, you are the only son to have the good sense to know what your mother liked. That colorful chicken was delicious. <laughs> Will you send me some more? How often do we get these gifts and then misuse them? Not only do we maybe forget about uh, these gifts, but maybe we're just misusing them. And they turn into colorful chickens instead of talking parrots. What's the first gift that we're given as a Christian? I, I believe the first gift we're given as a <coughs> Christian would be salvation. The gift of salvation, the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That salvation is so simple. That salvation that we have, it, it's a simple salvation. It's not complex. There's nothing, nothing we have to, you know, no, you know, incredible things we have to do to accept that salvation. It is so very simple. By grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. There's absolutely nothing we can do to obtain this salvation. It's a simple salvation, but it is a salvation that's solely dependent upon the Lord Jesus Christ. The, the Bible says, and uh, Titus says, not of works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope 
of eternal life. It's solely dependent upon Jesus Christ. It's nothing that we can do. Pastor uh, says it all the time, and, uh, uh, and he says, you know, we, can, we have uh, uh, all, every religion it can be put into uh, two categories it, when it comes to salvation. One is things that you do, uh, this list of things that you have to do, whether it be you know, baptismal regeneration or just uh, being a good boy or whatever it is. Yeah, that list of do's. And then you have the Christianity of the Bible and the true God, and that is the column of done. And only one thing is in that column of done. One person is in that column of done, the Lord Jesus Christ. That's all we need, the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation. It's very simple, but it's very, it's solely dependent <clears throat> upon the Lord Jesus Christ. Salvation is also very solid. Uh, 1 John 5, 13, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that ye may know that ye have eternal life. It's very solid. We, can, we're not, we don't have to wonder about the salvation that Jesus has given us. It's solid. We can know that we have eternal life. It's very simple. It's solely dependent on Jesus. It's solid, and it's very secure. Very secure. My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hands. John 10, 29. It is as secure as anything can be. Who do we think we are? that if no one can pluck us out of God's hand, if God's hand is around us, who do we think we are that we can actually get out of there? That's about as secure as anything I can imagine. Salvation, a gift. How often do we forget that gift of salvation? It's a good thing that we <coughs> excuse me, go through and have times of testimony because it, it puts into a remembrance the salvation that Jesus has given to us. And I appreciate all the testimonies off times of folks that, you know, of, of different um, areas in life and uh, different things the Lord has done for us, but it's so precious when you start out with, I praise the Lord for my salvation. Remember where you've come from, that salvation of the Lord Jesus Christ, that gift of salvation. What's that? the second gift that God has given to us? Right here. <clears throat> the fellowship of believers. The gift of the fellowship of believers. You know this is not something that everybody can do everywhere in the, you know, in the world. This is, this is not something that we can do openly in so many of those countries in the 1040 window. They have to have what they call an underground church, which basically is they come in, in and out quietly. They solidly serve the risen Savior. And then they depart uh, quietly so that they don't get rushed in by the, uh, by the military. This, is, this fellowship of believers is a precious, precious thing. How, how it is that we, we like to forsake the assembling of ourselves so often, but yet that is a true gift that God's given to us, to have that fellowship of the believers. Why do we go to church? Why are we here <clears throat> on a Sunday night? What, is it just because we want to see each other and just to have a happy, happy time all together over there? No, it's not. I, I believe we come to church because, uh, uh, because we, we need encouragement. We come to church for encouragement. It's to encourage one another. We come to church for edification. We come to church because of education. When we, when we learn out of this word, it's a good thing. We, we can, the more we learn, the more it's going to change. We, unless we change the way we think, it's not going to, we're not going to change the way we act. And so the more we can learn from God's holy word, from the preacher of God's word, that fellowship of the believers, being at church is a, is a good gift. And then, so we go to church for encouragement, for edification, for education, for emulation. Emulation, to be like Jesus. We go to church so that we can be educated as to how to 
emulate Jesus, to how to be like Jesus. I, I pray that every time you come to a service, that you pray in your heart. Before you come, <clears throat> coming to church should not be just a come in, plop down, bless me now kind of a, uh, attitude. That's not what church is about. I, I really hope that when you come into church, you say, okay, God, I pray that when I leave this place, I'm going to be a little bit more like your son, Jesus Christ, than when I came in this place. That's what the church is for. It's emulation. Get, getting you to, to be able to be a little bit more like Jesus every day. The gift of salvation, the gift of the fellowship of believers. I, I pray that we never lose the idea that that is a gift that God's given to us. How about this one? The gift of time. The gift of time. Everybody has the same amount of time, but God's given us time to redeem, has he not? Ephesians 5, 15 to 16. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. What do the wise do? Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Why is it so imperative that we remember that gift of time? Because the days are evil. Brother Moreland talked about this this morning. It was great. But we, we need to redeem the time because the days are evil. Or even, what is time? What is time? Webster's Dictionary defines time like this. Actually, the Webster's Dictionary uses 800 words to define the word time. But we're going to take it down to just a little definition here. that I, I really liked this one. The entire period of the existence of the known un universe. Earthly duration as distinguished from eternity. The entire period of existence of the world or humanity. That, <clears throat> look at that. Earthly duration as distinguished from eternity. In other words, time for each individual is that little dash on your tombstone. When you were born, are born, and when you die, that space in between, that's your time. Redeeming that time because the days are evil. Why do we need to, or how, how do we need to uh, redeem our time? That time, it's a gift that often I'm afraid we like to squander and just not use it to its full capacity. And we're not just talking about wishing that we had used that past time right. Don't dwell on that. How about the, the time that you have right now? The time that you're using right now, are you using it wisely? Are you using it willingly? And then plan on that time in the future. That time in the future, while you can't be guaranteed of it, you can be planning to use it wisely. When, when you are planning out your week, you're planning out your month, you're planning out your year, how do you wisely use your time? At, on, on Thursday, we're going to give everybody a calendar to have the uh, events that, uh, that we have planned here at the church for the next year. When, uh, when you go through and you start figuring out your, um, your vacations and this and that and the other thing, just look at that and say, okay, how am I going to wisely redeem my time? So I'm not going to squander it for myself, but do what I know I need to do for God. When it comes to, you know, the, the big, uh, big days, the turkey dinner day and the country fair day and all those, look at those times <clears throat> and say, okay, I'm going to redeem my time by being available there. We're not just talking about our present time, but plan on, plan on it in the future. Plan on it in the future. That gift of time is so precious. And so often we like to just squander that time. We have salvation. 
the gift of salvation. We have the gift of the fellowship of believers, the gift of time. How about the gift of the Holy Spirit? The gift of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is just a, an incredible gift that God has given us as a believer. The gift of the Holy Spirit. He's our comforter, is he not? You don't have to live in fear. You don't have to live in dismay. You don't have to live like that. He, he's our comforter. He, you know, he wants us to get outside of our comfort zone. He wants us to live outside our comfort zone, not just stay where we like to be all the time. But we can live outside of our own comfort zone and be uncomfortable because he is the comforter. The Holy Spirit is also our communicator. The, the guys at the uh, prison often, we, we have the guys come up and they, they, they often say, you know, I just don't understand the Bible. And I, I need something easier to understand, you know, and something, I guess, like a storybook or something. I don't know. But they want something easier to understand. <clears throat> and you know what the issue is? The Holy Spirit that's living within them isn't communicating yet. The more we communicate with God, the more he's going to communicate with us. It's, it's, it's two ways. The Holy Spirit is that communicator. He's going to make these words understandable. The lost will never understand this book. Never. It'll just be a bunch of words on a page. It might be some pretty poems and, uh, you know, nice old words but they'll never really understand it because they don't have the Holy Spirit living within them. The Holy Spirit is a wonderful gift. He's our comforter. He's our communicator. The Holy Spirit, have we forgotten? But he's our convictor. The Holy Spirit convicts us when we're doing something wrong. If the Holy Spirit's living within us, the Holy Spirit will convict us when we're doing wrong. And we will be miserable. If you're not miserable when you're doing something wrong, the Holy Spirit's not convicting you. You better check to see if the Holy Spirit's within you. The Holy Spirit, that precious gift that God's given us with salvation. He's our comforter, the communicator, the convictor. What's the next gift? <clears throat> next gift, I think the gift of God's creation. Look all around us. It's a wonderful thing. God's creation, God's now green earth in December. should be white earth. You know, I have a friend in El Paso that is posting pictures of snow. Go figure. But God's green earth. What is it that we take for granted so often? His creation, don't we? Whether it be other people around us or the, the beauty of the sunset and the, the mountains and the valleys and the streams and the lakes. God's creation shows his power. Look at, look at these, look at the streams and the rivers and going into the oceans. and It's amazing to be able to see God's power through creation. I mean, this, these vast canyons were formed because of water. I mean, it's just amazing to me. Absolutely incredible to me. We stay alive because of God's creation. We stay alive because of the oxygen that our, the plants and the trees and all uh, uh, give us to breathe in. It's just amazing to me. I, I don't understand this stuff. But to see God's power in his creation is incredible. To see God's promise in his creation. I think of the rainbow. God's promise never to destroy the earth again with a flood. We see God's power. We see God's promise. We see God's provision. He gives us his great creation for us to enjoy, for us to get sustenance from. God gives us his creation for our provision. Another gift that so often we just take for granted and so often we forget about. Well, what's the next gift God's given us? 
venture to say the next gift God has given us is the gift of the freedom from sin. Freedom from sin. You realize that now that you are a child of God, you don't have to serve Satan anymore. Now that you're a child of God, you don't have to sin anymore. Before you were a child of God, before you were saved, you didn't have a choice but to sin. You didn't have a choice but to do what you wanted to do. But now as a child of God, you actually have a choice. You can either do what you want to do or you can do what God wants you to do. The freedom from sin is a gift of God. It's an incredible gift. That incredible gift. That freedom from the payment of sin, death, and that freedom from the power of sin. Now, now we, we still are sinful creatures. We still have flesh. You pinch me, I'm still going to say, ow. That's never going to stop. But we have that free gift that God's given us, that freedom to not sin anymore. Before salvation, we didn't have that gift. We had to sin. We had to do our own way, go our own way. A gift of the freedom from sin. How about this next one? The gift of the Bible. Brother Moreland could come up and uh, preach this point probably better than I. Across the globe, there are more people without this gift than there are with this gift. How about that? Do we forget how great the gift of this precious book is? Do we wrap this book and set it on the dash of the car till the next week and then we unwrap it again. The gift of the Bible. A young boy named Timothy was planning to give his grandmother a Bible for Christmas. He wanted to write something special on the flyleaf but wasn't sure what to say. So he decided to copy what he'd seen in a book his father had received from a friend. Christmas morning came, and Grandmother opened her gift. She was not only pleased to receive the Bible, but she was amused by the inscription Timothy had put in it. It read, to Grandma, with compliments of the author. Even though the boy was unaware of it, he had suggested a unique fact about the Bible. It came to us from its author, God. What a precious gift. God has given us. How often do you, how many, how many avid readers do we have in this, in this group here? Okay. Do you, ha, do you have a, a certain author that you really, really enjoy? You know, if I, if I find that author, that is, that, that's a book that I'm going to want. You've gotten to understand and you've gotten to know that author and you know what they're books are kind of like, right? And you, you start having that, that urge for those books. I, before we got married, Tanya, um, she was uh, not in here, she's with us. Uh, Tanya was an avid, avid reader. I mean, she's still a big reader, but she was a major reader. When she wasn't in school and she had time, she would stay up, literally, she could read entirely through the night. And I mean, she's just serious reader, and I, I've never really been able to understand that, but she had certain people that she really enjoyed reading their books. Why is that? Because she got to understand the author. She got to know what that author was like and how that author kind of worked, and so those are, the, those are the books that she wanted to get. You realize the more we get to know the author, the more we're going to want this book. The more we get into this book, the more we're going to know the author. How is it that you know about how that author thinks? By reading their books, right? We, we can understand God by reading his word. 
not only by reading his word, we can understand God and uh, uh, get to appreciate the gift of the Bible by studying his word. And not only just by reading and studying his word, but then by memorizing his word. And not only by reading and studying and memorizing the word, but by meditating on the word. God promises to prosper Bible meditators. Joshua 1 8, this book of the law shall not depart out of thine mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. You know, that's, there's only one thing that by God has pro- promised prosperity with that's Bible meditation. That's it. That's the only thing, only promise God has given to allow somebody to prosper, to make somebody prosper. Is that, that is to meditate on the Word of God. What is Bible meditation? Bible meditation is not Bible memorization. You can memorize chapters and books of the Bible. But unless it goes from here to here, it'll mean nothing. The meditation is when You've memorized it. And then, not only have you memorized it, but you keep regurgitating it, regurgitating it. That is, it it's the idea of the cow and chewing its cud and it, it coming up into each of the eight or 13 or whatever many stomachs it has and, and regurgitating it into another stomach. And, and then that's, that's a meditation of your heart. So then, anytime a, a, a situation comes your way, what happens? That just automatically comes out because it's in your heart, not just in your head. God's word, it's encouraging. God's word, it's admonishing. And God's word, it's illuminating. So, the gifts we've been given, salvation, the fellowship of believers, time, the Holy Spirit, God's creation, freedom from sin, the Bible, And lastly, godly friends and family. You realize that's a gift? Not everybody has that. But everybody that's in this place tonight should be able to say they have that. Godly friends, family. That's another great reason for the church is to have that godly friends and family. In in our you, the sixth principle of our you says, those who do not love the Lord will not help you serve the Lord. The opposite is also very, very true. Those who do love the Lord will help you serve the Lord. That gift of good, godly friends. It's powerful, powerful gift. Let's not forget that we have these gifts. I hope that as we leave this place tonight that we realize we have been given a lot of gifts. Been, and, and that we go back to James 1, seven. Every good and every perfect gift cometh from above. Every one of these gifts, they've come from God. Now, do we want to squander and put those gifts back under the tree that God has given us? Or do we use them Take full use of them for our daily walk. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word. God, I pray that you would work in our hearts tonight. God, I pray that maybe We've seen one of these gifts or more that we've forgotten about. Maybe it hasn't come into remembrance quite as often as it should. God, I pray that
we would look back and say, I remember that salvation that you've given to me. Lord, I, I remember that gift of the fellowship of believers. And I remember that gift of time. Lord, I don't want to squander that. Make wise use of that time. God, that gift of the Holy Spirit, the gift of creation, your creation, Lord, that gift of the freedom from sin and that gift of the Bible. God, I pray that we might remember these gifts tonight. Every head bowed, every eye closed. We'll finish the prayer in a moment. I wonder if there's anybody here tonight that says, would say, you know what? God's, uh, God's dealt with me about forgetting one of these gifts. Forgetting that we actually have given, been given precious, precious gifts. I'm going to finish the prayer and and we'll have you stand and have Lisa play a couple stanzas of an invitation song. There's something you need to do business with God. You come tonight and do that. Heavenly Father, as we close this service, Lord, I pray that we would get right with you tonight. Lord, I pray that we would remember these gifts. In Jesus' precious name, amen. As Lisa plays, you can stand to your feet and the head back, eyes closed. Father, thank you so much for your precious word. I pray that you would just uh, go with us tonight. I pray that uh, we would be a little bit more like you when we leave this place. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen. Well, we do have, uh, don't forget the um, uh, meeting in the conference room, the Grove City School of the Bible. It is open up open to all ages from 11th grade up, uh, ladies, men. Um, if you've already signed up, um, uh, you still need to attend this meeting. If you want to sign up, uh, you need to send, uh, attend this. Uh, just a short meeting. He won't keep you long. And uh, if he does, I'm sorry, and he will be too. Um, but uh, it'll be, a, it'll be a, a nice short meeting. And um, let's, uh, let's sing a song of dismissal. What, what are we... Let's sing, it's a grand thing to be a Christian. It's the best thing I know. I forget these things after just one, one week of pastor being gone, right? Let's sing that together. It's a grand thing to be a Christian. It's the best thing I know. It's a grand thing to follow Jesus. Anywhere and everywhere I go for it's a grand thing to be a soldier in this army here below. 
It's the grandest thing to be a Christian. It's the best thing I know. And you know what? Since we just love singing around here, we have one more song we need to sing. It's Brother Bob's birthday. It's what I understand anyway, right? Yeah, okay. The glare tells me it's his birthday. Let's sing happy birthday to Brother Bob Wallace, all right? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Amen. You are dismissed.